So how is everyone? Any pain I need to be aware of? Okay, good. Okay, so let's stand up and find our pelvic points, please. For you Zoom people, if you haven't taken this class before, your pelvic point is about three inches below your navel. And what you want to think about is find that spot and just pull it into your spine gently. Okay, good. Everybody can feel it now. So once again, when you find your pelvic point and you pull it in, I see your posture change. Because what we're doing is we're changing the angle of our pelvis. Okay, relax. How are you today? Good. Yes. It's hard to tell with the mask. Okay, get nice and tall. Once again, we're taking the pelvic point about three inches below our navel and just pulling it into the spine. Now, when you do that, how many people feel something going on right here? Anybody? So those are our hip flexors, which get short when we sit. And when we get tall and pull the pelvic point in, we're actually putting them into extension, and that's why we're feeling that. And we'll take a break for a second and wait for uh, our other friends to sit down here. We said a couple more people coming to the class. So my grandson just turned six months and he's figuring out how to roll now. And I was thinking it would be great sometime in the future to have a class with seniors and babies in the same class, just rolling on the floor together. We can learn a lot from them. Yeah. Because they know how to move. Right, right, yeah. So he can roll to one side, not the other side yet. And then, then he'll be crawling and then up on one knee. But the same thing I'm having a couple of my private clients do. And it's amazing. In six weeks, they're on the floor now, crawling around, going underneath coffee tables. It's crazy. And I keep saying, you don't have to go with just one woman. You do not have to go, have to crawl underneath the coffee tables every single time. She says, but it's like, it's so much fun. <laughs> so I don't know what I've created. How are you? Did you receive my email? Yes. Okay, you're quite welcome. Hello. Okay, once again, let's get tall, find the pelvic point about three inches below your navel and just pull it in, just slightly. And you'll feel your pelvis change a little bit, just the position of it. And ideally, that's the way our pelvis was positioned before we sat down for 40 years. So yeah, your posture definitely changes when you do it. You've got that nightclub bouncer stance. <laughs> Okay, relax. Think of shoes, Nat. Oh, thank you. One more time, let's have feet parallel and pull the pelvic point in. And just kind of breathe into it. Ideally, anytime we find a new position, we want to breathe through the nose into the belly. And what that does is it activates our parasympathetic nervous system and tells the body that this position is okay. So it's especially uh, important in different balance positions because otherwise you can get tense and the body fights it. So this one doctor I'm studying, he puts it perfectly. If you can breathe into a position, you own the position. If you cannot breathe into it, then you're just renting the position. Okay, good, and let's have a seat. For those of you who are interested, probably starting first week in March, I'm going to try to do it every week where I put together a video with a new move on Facebook and it will also be on my webpage. And then probably within the next few months set up a YouTube channel as well with a library of moves on there that you can reference uh, 
for, you know, whatever's going on. If you have pain or whatever, a different balance thing, you can just go in. And I'll probably have it grouped in different segments, either by movement pattern or body part. So I'll keep getting going on that. I'm just going to figure out all the technology and how to edit videos and all that stuff. My kids seem to be pretty good at it, but <laughs> bit of an age difference there. Okay, so get to the front of your chair. You don't want the back on your back against the back of the chair. And now you have your sit bones underneath here. So I want you to think of your pelvic point, get a little tall, and find a position where you can sit and kind of hold your pelvic point. That's really good. Really good. So all of you, actually you all look like you're in detention. And like the principal just walked in or something. <laughs> I knew you'd relate to that. Yep. But that's beautiful sitting posture. Much better than this. Now if you remember last class we were doing this for a while and we all get tired. And that says something when you can get tired just because you're sitting in a different, in a certain position. Oh, so, so just kind of rock and find the sweet spot where your felt, where your pelvis is the most comfortable. You feel balanced. That's really good. Really good. Yeah, you look like you're definitely afraid of detention. <laughs> it's like, but think about it. Where's your spine right now? You've got the balance going on. You're kind of tight through here because you have your pelvic point. Everybody's sitting with your hands here. But this is perfect sitting posture. Now eventually in this position, the muscle's going to adapt to it, and the spine will adapt to it, and your body's going to like it because the body, believe it or not, ideally would rather be in this position than squat. So let's just hang out for a little while. So how many times have you guys been asked have you traveled in the last 10 days? Every time, I know. I probably get my temperature taken like seven or eight times a week going into different facilities. This is really good. Now, how many people are starting to feel a little fatigued in the lower back? Yeah? Now, what I should do is put on like a long movie like Godfather Part 2 or something, which is probably like three and a half hours, and then just have you sit in this position and watch the movie. I was listening to this one doctor. He said if you could... If you stood against the wall properly and had good wall posture, and he said if you could staple your shirt to the wall and you were there for like two weeks, your posture problems would be solved after two weeks. I haven't found any volunteers to try that experiment yet. Okay, let's stand, find our pelvic point again. Now, when you stood, did anybody feel like a little difference in the lower back? No? Okay, good. Who's been trying the movements at home as far as on the bed or on the floor? How are they going for you? Good. So, do you feel like looser when you, when you get up from the floor or? Okay. Okay. I feel good. You feel good, exactly. Yeah, exactly, because your body used to be in those positions all the time. And when you get back there, like I said, my private client, who's, I see her four times a week, so she's on the floor four times a week, crawling, crawling underneath the coffee table, rolling, doing different things, and she put it best, she says, my body feels like it's part of me again, which was elegantly put. Uh, because when, and it was funny, I mentioned, that to my kids, and they had no idea what I was talking about. They were all around 30 years of age, and they're like, well, what does she mean by that? Because their bodies are still part of them up here. This ours are not, or not as much as they used to be. Okay. 
So think about the pelvic point, and we're going to go into the vacuum. So once again, the vacuum, big breath, we're going to blow all the air out of the belly, and then suck the belly in, the abdominals in, as far as possible. So, nice and tall, get your pelvic point. Breathe through the nose, blow out forcefully. And then kind of suck the belly in. Everybody feeling it through here? Is anybody not feeling it through here? You do? Okay, take a break. We're going to do a few more of these. This is a great movement for a couple of reasons. First of all, psychologically, after you've done it for a while, your waist feels smaller, okay? Which is a good feeling to have. The other thing is it actually starts to become smaller it's going to help with your posture, it's going to help with your pelvic point, it's going to help with lower back pain, um, and it'll make you a little bit taller. All right, let's do it again, pelvic point. So zoom people, we're taking a deep breath through the nose, into the belly, blow out all the air, and then kind of suck your stomach in. And you should feel it right through here, everybody feel it? Posture is excellent. Okay, take a break. How many people feel that in the lower back when you do it? Yes, okay, good. Good, good, good. So once again, we're changing the position. I gave you the pictures in the beginning of the program. We're changing the position of the pelvis just a little bit. But it makes a huge difference. I mentioned last week here, a uh, longtime student here at Walpole who hasn't been able to make it recently, but she's been doing it on Zoom. She when she changes her pelvis position and walks, she no longer has knee pain. And you guys were in classes with her in the past, and she always had knee pain. But just by changing the position of the pelvis, her femurs here are now sitting in the knee differently. And that's why she no longer has the pain. The problem is she has to remember to hold the pelvic point while she walks, and she doesn't remember all the time. But when she does, the knee pain is gone. Okay, let's do a couple more vacuums. Deep breath through the nose. Blow out all the way, as much air as you can, and then slowly suck the abdominals in. And you should feel it right through here and in the lower back. Everybody got it? Okay, sit down and take a break. So I'm already starting to get a little fatigued in the lower back, which is sad, <laughs> because we really haven't done anything physically-wise. All right, we'll take a minute off. So this was a test, and every single one of you have passed, you're sitting perfectly. I was waiting for someone when I said, take a break, to do this. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So I told you I've been working with a 99-year-old who's been in a wheelchair for six years. I've been working with her for a year and a half now. And she's now standing. I'm holding her right hand but I'm really not doing anything with it. It's just like providing comfort. And I have a hand in the small of her, of her back and we're like this far away from each other. And she's doing all the standing, which is great because she's been in a wheelchair unable to stand for six years. Uh, so I'm hoping within the next few months we start transitioning her out of the chair into a walker. You met her. Yeah. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I train her, her daughter, and her granddaughter. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, well, that's what she's done. But yeah, standing, and there's like, I have a picture of there's about this much distance between us, and all I'm doing is a hand in the small of her back and holding her hand. I have, but I'm going to put the, the new ones on Facebook, yeah. Well, like I said, it's what she's done. I've just given her a few tips. But she puts in the work, and 99 years old, 
and I'm over there four times a week, and she never misses a workout. You know, I mean, like everybody else, has good days and bad days, but she she never says I don't want to do it. So. Okay, what we're gonna do is stand up, hold the side of your chair. So you heard the cl there's no classes in Foxborough tomorrow because they're doing vaccines? Okay. I have a class there, a men's fitness class I started in December and we still haven't finished yet because of the different changes in the schedules. Okay, so one knee up and just kind of hold it. Kind of get the feel of how your balance is. Other knee. So we probably have one side that's better than the other. Now what I want you to do, set your pelvic point and then bring the first knee up again. You notice the difference? Can you set the pelvic point? No? So I find when I do that, I'm a little bit more stable. So find your pelvic point, zoom people about three inches below the navel, pull that in and then leg up. Take a break. Natalie, that's really good. You weren't holding the chair. Can you do it on both sides without holding the chair? Are you holding the pelvic point? <laughs> okay, other side. That's really good. There are some athletes, professional athletes, who cannot do this on both legs. Okay, let's do it again. Find your pelvic point, about three inches below the navel, pull it in, one leg up, and hold the pelvic point. And other side, set the pelvic point, and then up. I don't see any of you wavering. Really good. Take a break. That was excellent. I should have taken a picture of that. You all look like you were running. How's the Jeep? Good? Yeah, I ended up turning mine in. Um, it was the end of a lease and it just wasn't enough space because I had a two door, so not enough space for all my gear. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go in the same position, but we're gonna rock the leg backwards and forwards. So up, back. Set the pelvic point, up, back. Up, back. So you're doing that without holding on. Yes, you're right. So Natalie just brought up a good point. It's tough coordinating the movement with your pelvic point. Reason being, our pelvic, our pelvis actually has two halves, okay? And they should move independently, but it's very difficult because we've been sitting so long that they, they've kind of forgotten how to do that, okay? And everything's gotten tight around it. So you're right when you say that. Mm-hmm. Okay, set the pelvic point. We're gonna do the other leg. And up and back. Nice and slow. Focus on the movement. Focus on your pelvis. Other side. Set the pelvic point. Nice and slow, control the movement. And other side again. Set the pelvic point.
Nancy's in the zone. <laughs> okay, take a break. You can have a seat. Yeah, I just looked over at you, Nancy, and you were just like focused. Yeah, so there are six bones in here, and once again, two halves, and ideally, those halves should be independent of each other. And they are when we were kids, and then once, as usual, we sit down for a while, and 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and then they stop moving independently. I may have mentioned this to you before, Carol. They studied a kindergarten class. Did I tell you this story? With hip flexibility. And the hip flexibility in the kindergarten class was excellent. They took the same class, same kids after first grade. Noticeable reduction in hip mobility because in first grade, I guess you sit more than in kindergarten. And that's what happened. So these are first graders. So that's something we have to work on. There's a lot of physical therapists now that are having 6th, 7th, and 8th graders do different movements and like go into a squat or whatever. And the kids have pain. And they're like, what, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old maybe? And they're having pain already getting in a squat position. And we really didn't when we were kids because we were outside playing all the time all the time, um, and kids these days are not outside playing all the time. But if you remember when we were kids, come in when the street light goes on, right? Yeah, come in when the street light goes on. Okay, we're now going to go into the one-legged stance. So we're just gonna be in this position. So once again, we're kind of separating the halves of the pelvis. Once you get in this position and you feel comfortable and safe, set your pelvic point. So pull it in. Did you feel a difference in your posture there? I could see it from up here. Okay, relax the pelvic point. Now pull the pelvic point back in. Just have a difference in your posture. Relax, and pull the pelvic point in. Did you feel how your hip squared when you did that? Okay, let's try the other side, please. Get nice and long. Natalie, I don't need any chair. <laughs> okay, get nice and long, set the pelvic point. Now, does it feel different than the other side? For me, it definitely does. It feels different, Nancy? Yeah, that's because we all have asymmetries. One side works differently than the other. Okay, relax, set the pelvic point. You look taller. Relax, set the pelvic point. How many people feel it right in here on the back leg? You do? You do? Switch sides. Set the pelvic point. Do you feel it on here on the back leg at all? You? A little bit, okay. So your hip flexors are tighter than on the other side than this side. Do you feel it, Nancy? Okay, good, good. So right now, from all the work we've done, you're feeling it through here because your whole core is activated now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, have a seat, take a break. Does anybody have any questions about the moves I gave you for homework or the moves that how to do them on the floor or on the bed? No? Okay. 
So you said you've tried the rolling. Okay. And it's difficult starting with the arms, but not the legs? Okay. Yep. Yes. Uh huh. Good. So this was the rolling moves or the other moves? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so that is. You mean like a, the clamshell? Okay, so that's not in this program, but that's okay. But I know you, I know you have the, the sheets uh, of all the homework at home. Okay, so the clamshell, we'll address that. We're working a little muscle in here called the gluteus medius, and I can show, I have a picture of it if you want to see it after class. It's a primary stabilizer of the hip. So if we're sitting all the time, our hip flexors get tight and short, the glute medius and the other gluteal muscles start to shut off, okay? So the clamshell, we're just here, knees at a 90 degree angle, and I'm just lifting up. And you can do this with like a mini band or something that we've used in other classes. And we're just lifting up, and it wakes up the glute medius, and in turn, you have more stability through the hip. So that's going way back, a few programs. Oh no, not a problem, that's good. I'm glad you still have all the sheets. Excellent. Yes? Yep. Okay, so the sitting moves? Mm-hmm. So what you can do with the knee replacements as opposed to like doing knees or these, this is what you're talking about? Don't bring the feet in so much, okay? Uh, you can even keep one leg straight. And then over time, just see, just pull in the heels a little bit. And if you'll pain or discomfort, then bring the heels back and see over time if you can start bringing the feet a little closer to you. Okay, yeah, yeah. And keep in mind, with the knee replacements, obviously there's some scar tissue in there, which could still be an issue, but obviously the lack of movement too. But you have no problem, you know, doing something like this, correct? Okay, so you also may want to try doing things like this, because now, and I don't know how it works with knee replacements, if it's a full replacement or whatever, but in your joints you can release what is called synovial fluid, which is kind of like WD-40 for our joints. It's almost like the Tin Man or the Wizard of Oz. Uh, and try to get that warmed up, some blood in there, possible synovial fluid, and then when you do the work on the bed, you may find it's a little easier. Okay? Not a problem. So everybody's cool with the, you said you've been doing the moves on the floor. Yeah. Have you tried rolling yet? Yes. Okay, try the rolling. Because uh, once again, I can see someone with a balance of stability issue. Put them on the floor. They can roll to one side, but they can't roll to the other side. You get them in a position where they can roll to the bad side and they stand up and balance the stability better instantly. Because all the muscles here that we use to roll are now awake again. They're active, they're firing. And in turn, if they're firing, once you stand, they're stabilizing you. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So you may want to try some rolling. Uh, if you're going to do it on the bed, Make sure there's plenty of bed there so that when you roll, you're not off the bed. Um, but other than that, you can give it a shot. Okay. Let's go through the whole program again. We'll do it a little faster, just get everything activated. So we're going to stand. 
find your pelvic point, zoom people, that's about three inches below the navel. And you're just gonna find that point and pull it in towards the spine. And you may feel something in the lower back. Those are literally your sacroiliac joints connected to the pelvis, starting to shift a little bit. Sacroiliac joint is gonna transfer weight from upper body to the lower body and vice versa. So obviously, if everything is active and working properly here, your balance is better as well because your job is transferring weight. Okay, cover point in towards the spine. When you do it, you look taller. And relax. And you guys don't fall for that anymore. Even when you're relaxed, you're still holding the position. I'm trying to catch somebody, but I can't. Pelvic point, pull it into the spine. So when you do it, you feel your upper body go like this because we're changing the position, the angle of your pelvis. Okay, good, relax. And one more time, find the pelvic point and pull it in. You're pulling in here. Who's feeling this in the lower back? Yeah. Crazy, huh? All we're doing is taking a point here and moving it like this far, and our lower backs are fatiguing. Okay, let's do a sit again. So we're actually on what are called sit bones, and we want to find the sweet spot where our pelvis is tilted in a certain way. Pull it, pull the pelvic point in and then find the sweet spot where you can balance comfortably. And good point, I was just watching you. It's much easier with the feet a little wider because you can support yourself. Look at all of you, nice job. Nice job. You look like you can sit like that all day. <laughs> Once again, just kind of rock the pelvis a little bit and find the spot where you feel the most comfortable. Get a little long. You should start to feel a little fatigue in here as these muscles are firing, trying to keep you upright. Think about pulling your ears to the ceiling, Natalie. So lengthen your spine this way. Any pain? How's your left side been, by the way? Okay. Okay. How are you feeling? Okay. Wow. That's the highest I've ever seen you raise that. Really good. Really good. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I don't know if you guys can feel the difference, but I've noticed a difference visually from the first class to now. So I've even doing the homework or doing different things, but total difference. Did you just notice how you got out of that chair? Better than last week, yeah. Yeah, because you got up and there was no this, it was this. It was almost like your pelvis was in the proper position getting up. That was beautiful. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna stand, we're gonna work the vacuum again, please. I think I told you last week, I have a client in Boston who's addicted to the vacuum, uh, to the point where if her waist appears any smaller, I'm gonna tell her not to do it anymore. Um, she's very petite anyway, but she does it constantly. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> so actually, can you vacuum, holding the vacuum? Yes, you can. New program for you. 
Uh, we'll do it at my house, and I'll just have you vacuum while holding the vacuum. No charge. I'll try it. <laughs> okay, feet parallel, get nice and tall, pelvic point, big breath through the nose, blow it out, and then suck in the stomach. Relax. Everybody feeling it? Should feel it here and in the lower back. Anybody not? You feeling it, Nancy? What's that? It's yes, it is exhausting. And it's interesting because all we're doing is taking these muscles and pulling them in about half an inch. And it's exhausting. Um, but think about it, if you do this every day, in two or three months, it's not going to be exhausting, and these muscles will be doing it on their own. Correct. That was to learn the position. So let's, good question, let's try, let's try this. Pelvic point, big breath, blow it all out, vacuum. Now see if you can hold the vacuum and breathe. It is hard. Exactly, but that's a good point, and I spoke about that before. If you can hold the vacuum and breathe, you own the position. Otherwise, we're renting it. Initially, I had you holding your breath for a few seconds, or five seconds, to make the mind-muscle connection. Um, so let's practice this again. We'll do this a few times. Pelvic point in, breath, blow it all out. Now pull the abdominals in, and without relaxing here, relax the rest of your body, and just kind of breathe. Is everybody breathing? You still holding the vacuum? It's hard to do. I'm ready for a nap. Yes, excellent. What you're feeling here, all right, you guys can have a seat, take a break, because we're gonna do a couple more of these. Thank you for bringing that up, Nancy. So Carol, you're feeling it here? Okay. So our quadriceps, four muscles here, we have one called the rectus femoris, which attaches to the knee and the hip. It serves as a hip flexor, just like these muscles get tight when we sit. The reason you're feeling it all the way down here is because we're taking that hip flexor from flexion here into extension. So we're lengthening it. Once you hold the vacuum and you've got your pelvic point, you're feeling a pull right here as that muscle lengthens, which is good. Because once again, when you sit, all your hip flexors shorten and one of them goes from here to here. And that starts to shorten as well. So if you were to stand up and grab your ankle and do this, you'd feel that exact same muscle. Okay, so good point, thank you. So we're gonna give you another minute, and then we're gonna do vacuum with breathing. Don't blame Nancy for bringing that up. <laughs> So try that this week with the vacuum. And do you remember when we had the program when we did the brace sitting? Yes. Okay. And I was telling you you have to find the sweet spot with the brace, okay, where you can be supported here but still be able to function normally. Let's try doing that with the vacuum. The vacuum is the exact opposite of the brace. The vacuum, we're pulling everything in. The brace is this, where we tighten. So think of it as the way the body's designed, all our fascia and our brace abdominals here are designed to protect our internal organs. 
from threats, okay? So like a punch to the stomach or whatever. So if you had a choice of doing a vacuum or a brace, if someone was going to hit you in the stomach, obviously the brace is the way to go because now we're flexing these muscles here to protect the internal organs. When we do the vacuum, we're exposing our internal organs a little bit to threat more. That would be an easier concept to understand if we were still in medieval times and people had swords. Okay, let's try this. Try a vacuum sitting, okay? So pelvic point, big breath, exhale, and now pull it in. How many can do a vacuum sitting? Everybody? But it feels different. Okay, hold it. Some breathing. You breathing, Natalie? Okay, good. I don't want you to pass out on me. So when I'm doing the vacuum sitting, it's easier. It doesn't seem like there's much of a strain. Is that what you guys are feeling as well? A little bit more strain in the back, okay. A little harder to breathe. Okay, and that makes sense as well. Because if you're sitting, and even just a little bit of this thoracic flexion here, this little tilt, is gonna make breathing more difficult. So, if I'm in this position, that's my breath, that's as much as I can take in. If I'm long, I'm probably taking at least twice as much air. And that's why, uh, and you guys have taken this program where we try to get long and stretch the muscles between the ribs. Because I notice a lot of my 90 year old clients, very shallow breathers, and they've kind of lost the flexibility with the cartilage and the muscles between the ribs and they can't expand as much. Okay, let's stand up please. Your sitting posture is killer today. Okay, now we're going to do standing vacuum, pelvic point, big breath, blow it all out, and then suck in the gut. Now try to breathe. So obviously you really can't do belly breathing with the vacuum, but you can do a little chest breathing. Pardon my language, Carol, but that is badass posture. I wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> Hold it in. Okay, who's getting really tired through here in the lower back? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, have a seat. And that will be enough vacuuming for this class. But think about it, if you did a, a little of the vacuum every single day, a little of the brace every single day, and you can get down on one knee, okay, you can get down on one knee. So when you, I do this a lot now, and I do it for functional movement screening with some clients. Some people can be in this position and be solid, and then go to the other side, and wobbling all over the place. And that's just an asymmetry where some stabilizer muscles on one side are not active as much as the other side. So you do things like that. I've noticed a huge difference in my core, my abs. I probably lost an inch in waist size. I'm a lot tighter here. When I have a big meal, like a really big meal, I don't experience like this gut protrusion like I used to. And that's because everything here is now tight and firing. And that's also good for the lower back. Okay. So let's get to the side of the chair, please. Is anyone experiencing any lower back pain or just kind of fatigue? A little back pain? 
Okay. Okay. So this is another great thing for the core because if we're here, all these muscles have to fire. If the, if you're super, I don't even know if I can do it. If you're super relaxed here, I'm all over the place. So anytime you can do something like this at the kitchen sink or whatever, you're helping through here. Okay, so set your pelvic point and one leg up. Hold the pelvic point. So if you're noticing the body going like this, that's all your stabilizer muscles fire. And those are the important ones for balance and posture. Pelvic point. Take a break. That's sick, Natalie. Absolutely sick. Okay, we're gonna give you a minute and then we're gonna bring the knee up and we're gonna start rocking backwards and forwards to try to get some movement in the pelvis because once again, the pelvis is two halves. How are you feeling, Jeannie? Good? So I assume you haven't been doing the slope in your backyard recently because of the snow? Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, grab your chair, set your pelvic point, leg up and then up a little further and then back. This is a slow, controlled movement. I want you to actually visualize your pelvis moving. Yeah, basically, where you're going to feel it is in the sacroiliac joint. So, right in here, right in here. So, if I put my fingers right here on those joints, I can feel them moving. Ideally, we want them to move very gracefully, very smooth. Sometimes, if you have muscles or connective tissue around a joint that's too tight, you go to move and it's like you're, you're trying to drive with your parking brake on. So I remember when I used to go out for a run, I had a parking brake on one side and I could feel it and it would take me a while to, to loosen that area up. Let's do this again. Pelvic point, one leg, knee up, slowly back. Just feel the pelvis and the sacroiliac joint moving in your lower back. Excellent. Take a break. Do a couple more of those. So if you haven't done the move we just did in a while, these two joints here, I don't want to say they're getting frozen, but they're not moving optimally, and that's what can lead to sacroiliac pain and the nerve pain shooting down the leg as well. Okay, let's try this again. Knee up. Pelvic point. Fire your stabilizers all through here, nice and balanced and nice and slow. Just backwards and forwards. You may find over time that the movement becomes longer because that area is freeing up. Nice and slow. Okay, sit down and take a break. Carol, when you do that, do you notice that these muscles here, the ones you were talking about before, when you go back, do they feel like they're a little tight? Okay, good. That's good because we may have loosened them up throughout the course of the class. Next week, Natalie, I think I'm just going to have a square for you, no chair. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> okay. I might get tired. I might get tired. Okay, how does everybody feel in the lower back? 
Fatigue? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? It's warm. I'm sorry. Warm. Oh, it's warm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mine is as well. And I don't, I feel a little bit more mobile back there. I don't feel as stiff. Like when you, you know how when you get up in the morning and things aren't working properly? Yeah. Sitting posture is awesome today, Nancy. Absolutely awesome. Okay, we are going to go into side of the chair, one leg forward. And then once you're in that position and you feel balanced, set the pelvic point. So now I'm feeling it right in here. I'm feeling a stretch. Breathe into it, but hold the pelvic point. Let's do the other side. Find the pelvic point. I'm going to have to work on this so that I can keep up with Natalie next week. Okay. okay. You'll be balancing your weight distribution. You Excellent question. Should you be balancing your weight distribution? Ideally, the brain and central nervous system is doing it without you thinking about it. But if you're asking that question, you must be feeling a little off balance a little bit. Okay, so let's do this. Go to the side where you felt a little off balance. Big breath through the nose. And then gently exhale. We're breathing through the nose into the belly. What we're doing now, we're activating the parasympathetic nervous system and we're telling the body that this position is not a threat. And just relax, let's do the other side. So excellent question. You may find if you do this this week as part of your homework, but breathe into it, the weight distribution thing is gonna go away because you're no longer nervous about it and the body just does it on its own. Nice and relaxed. Jeannie's no longer holding the chair. Nice and relaxed, okay, take a break. The first time we did this earlier in the class, you were holding the chair, now you're not. Okay, all right, Zoom people, Jeannie just brought up an excellent point. The, stall, the taller you stand, the more stable you feel. Why is that, anybody know? Because the taller you're standing, you're creating that length, that height, by having your stabilizers be active, okay? So if I'm like this, my stabilizers are active. If I'm like this, they're very active, and in turn, your balance is gonna be better because they're working. That's why they're called stabilizer muscles. So anytime we do a movement, it's started by stabilizer muscles, then the big muscles take over for the movement, and then it finishes up with the stabilizer muscles. So if like I told you before, the gentleman on the floor could roll to one side, but couldn't roll to the other. His stabilizing muscles were pretty much shut off, so that would affect every move he's doing, no matter what side. But that's why you could do that without holding on to the chair, because you got long, you got tall, and when you do that, everything through here becomes active. Make sense? Okay, good point, good point. Okay, we're going to finish up with a quick test. So I want you to hold on to the chair in this one. And as opposed to taking a step forward, take a step backwards. So it's going to be a little longer than your step forward. 
Now find your pelvic point. Now, did, how many people notice when you took the step backward that your glutes, your butt muscles started, supported you? You notice that? You notice that as well? Reason being, if you step forward, what's firing first is right here. If you step backwards, what fires first is here. And then you're a lot more stable. So if you want to practice trying to get into a lunge position a little bit, take the step backwards, these muscles are firing now and they're the prime stabilizers of the hip. Pulling in your calf, yep. Yeah. So in the back leg. Okay, so this is something you may want to incorporate because it, do it on the other side. Nope, you want to take a step back. Same pulling? Exactly, okay. So you have probably a left ankle issue where it isn't as mobile and that's why you're feeling the pulling there. So anytime you notice one side is different than the other, get into that position on that side and do it for a week or so. You know, you can do it three times a day for 10 seconds. If that goes away, now we've kind of cured an asymmetry, all right, and left the right sides are moving more in tune with each other. I mean, even to the point, say you're super tight right here just on the right side, or tight, tight off of here on the right side, your left stride may be a little longer than your right stride, okay, and over time that's going to shift the pelvis and cause issues. Okay, nice and long, set your pelvic point, step back. Jeannie, you look like you're about an inch taller than when you came in this morning. Breathe through the nose into the belly. Janet, you're no longer holding the chair. That's awesome. Other side, and we're taking a step back. Really good. You guys are beasts. Okay, we are done. Thank you very much. Awesome change. All right, you just sat down beautifully and you're nice and straight. Okay? Plus, you were holding on to the chair big time in the beginning of the class when we were doing the movements, and at the end, you weren't holding on. Exactly. You feel more secure because the stabilizer muscles started firing, they woke up, they became active, and that's why you felt more secure because they're doing their job. Yeah. I started thinking about it before now. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to let go. Uh-huh. Excellent. And you still felt safe. Beautiful. Awesome job. Thank you. Awesome job. Okay, thank you Zoom people. We will see you next week. If you are on Zoom and you want a copy of the homework, email me at Steve Avellino, A-V-E-L-L-I-N-O, at yahoo.com, or you can contact me on my website, reverseaceaginprocesses.com, and I'll get the homework off to you. Okay, thank you.